In this video, I'm going to share some pro tips with you on how you can uplift your editing game to make your videos high quality and looking really, really professional. Now, this video is going to be very beginner friendly, but I'm sure there's some tips that you can take away even if you know how to edit or have been editing your YouTube videos already by yourself. The other thing that I want to mention is that we're going to be using a browser based editor. So there is actually nothing to download in this video. You simply go online and you can start for free following every single one of the tips that I'm going to share inside today's video. So are you ready? Hey go getter, it's Salma Jafri and on this channel I'm going to show you how to grow your visibility, credibility and profitability with YouTube. So if that's what you want to do, hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon and let's begin. Okay, so I've divided this video into very clear sections and we're going to start off with the first section, which is going to be how to film for the edit. Now, there are a couple of really important points that you need to consider while filming that are actually going to make your editing look professional. So what are those things that you need to consider? Number one, your setup and the gear and equipment that you're going to be using. So very basic equipment should be your phone or another camera that you're going to be using, a tripod to make sure your image is going to be stable, at least two lights and a microphone. So all the gear and description that I use is linked down below. You can go and check that out, but that's the basic gear and equipment you want to start off off with to avoid shaky videos uh, or inaudible videos or videos that actually don't look good. So you want to start with basic gear and equipment to make sure that your production looks good. The next tip I have for you is to film in sections. This tip is going to help you so much in the editing phase and also in the filming phase. So how do you film in sections? Well, the first thing you want to do is download my video content planner, which will tell you the sections that you need to have inside your video. So for example, there's the hook section, there's the intro, there's the body, there's the call to action section, and you want to film all of these separately. What that will do is it will make it it's so much easier to edit them as neatly as possible and you can also make sure that there is not too many mistakes inside and if there are any mistakes you can reshoot that particular section rather than having to do the entire video all over again. I don't want you to think that it's going to be easier to fix mistakes in the edit. Instead I want you to film in sections and do retakes of that section because that is actually way easier to edit than trying to fix mistakes in the edit. The other tip that I have for you to film in sections is that at the start of every section, you want to look at your camera lens and you want to hold your pose for three seconds and then start to speak. And then when you are winding up that particular section, you want to do the exact same thing. You want to hold your pose for three seconds while looking at the camera. Holding your pose for three seconds in the beginning of the clip and at the end of the clip is really going to make for a smooth edit. And also filming in sections is going to allow you to not ramble as much and stay more on point, which is again going to make for a better edit. It's going to make for a smoother editing experience for you. All right, now that I have filmed these six clips as a demo for today's video to edit, I'm going to go ahead and transfer the six clips from my phone to my computer. And as I transfer them to my computer, I'm going to rename these clips. And this is really great to do because it's going to make sure that in the edit, I know what comes first and what comes next. In fact, when you're filming these clips, you can also say that section out loud. So you have the audio reference point. So for example, if I'm filming the hook, I can start off by saying hook and then name that file as hook. So it becomes really easy to know where all my files are and all my clips are when I'm actually sitting down to edit multiple clips. The next thing I'm going to do is upload all of my six clips for free to invideo.io. So you can start a free account and start editing your video right away with that free account. The next thing we're going to do is make a content edit inside in video. And my number one tip for you inside here is going to be how to cut and trim your clips to make them look professionally edited. Okay, so once you're inside in video, what I want you to do is choose a blank template. So we're going to start from scratch and in your dimensions, you're going to choose 16 by 9 if you're creating a YouTube video, which we are doing in this demo. 
The next thing we're going to do is as the timeline opens up, we're going to simply take the first clip, which we've conveniently labeled as our hook, and we're going to just drop it into our timeline. As soon as you drop the clip into your timeline, an editor will open up and it's going to ask you if you want to trim this clip or drop the entire video. So you definitely want to trim this clip because I'm starting off with uh, a false start. And so I want to edit that out. And so here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to move the slider to the point where I want to actually start the clip from. I'm going to remove any dead air, any pauses, and I'm going to cut very, very close to where I actually start to speak. Now, this is key. You want to cut the moment before you start speaking. That is where you make your first edit cut. And similarly for the ending, you want to cut exactly as you finish speaking. Now, remember when I told you to film for the edit and leave those pauses in? This is where those pauses are going to do you a huge favor because you have that room to cut exactly at the right point. Okay, so now we're going to repeat this process for the rest of the five clips, the rest of the four clips actually. So we're only gonna do the first five clips now. So you wanna take the second clip and drop it again into the timeline and edit that particular clip again. Again, you wanna trim the beginning, trim the ending. In case you have made any mistakes in your filming and you need to edit part of that clip and remove a certain section that doesn't need to be there, then the way to do that in NVIDIA is by clicking on add section. When you click on add section, it will essentially split the clip and then you can trim it to the section that you do want to keep. My third tip for you in editing and making it look really pro quality is a feature inside in video with where they add music, but with a caveat. So you want to click on add music and add music to your entire file, but you want to also reduce the volume of that music because there's nothing more annoying than speaking on camera and not being heard because the music is too loud. And that makes your video look really unprofessional. So you want to use the in video feature called ducking. And the way that it works is you want to reduce the volume and then you want to check the box called volume ducking and reduce the volume by to about 20% or so. What that will do is when you are speaking, the volume will automatically go up. And when you are showing something else like a transition or a title, the volume of the music will automatically go up. And then as soon as you start speaking, the volume will automatically go down. So you don't have to manually control the volume. And this is a great way to keep a consistent music uh, track running in the background of your YouTube videos without it interfering with your talking voice. So when you get somebody to watch 30 seconds of your hook, that is one view. Hey Go Getter, it's Salma Jafri, and on this channel, I'm gonna show you how to grow your visibility, credibility, and profitability with YouTube. So if that's what you wanna do, hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon, and let's begin. Okay, next we're gonna add a title sequence. Title sequences are great for branding, but if you make them too long, they can really harm your watch time and your video retention. So my tip here is to make your title sequence around three seconds. And you don't wanna use something very fancy, again, complicated or very long. So the way that I would recommend to do this is to use InVideo and go to their templates and type in intro and you'll get a lot of different YouTube intros. So you wanna choose a template that matches the vibe of your video because there is nothing more disconcerting than having a gamer template on a cooking channel, for instance, right? So you really wanna make sure that the template you choose matches the vibe of your channel and your video's content. Now, once you have chosen a template you want to click on add scene and add that template. And the other thing you want to do is make sure to customize that template to your brand colors. So InVideo has a brand kit where you can specify your brand colors and then automatically apply them to all the elements that you choose. So this is going to make your intro look branded and professional.
The next thing we're going to do is add transitions. Transitions are a great way to visually divide your scenes so that somebody watching your video knows when you are starting one section, when you are ending another section. So let's say you have three main points to make in your video. You want to add in transitions at the end of each of those three points. So you want to click on transitions, that little button between clips, and then choose a tra simple transition that again matches the vibe of your video. So I have a lot of bokeh of effect in my videos, including on my channel header in my video. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a circle transition to match that bokeh effect. Now, as I click on this transition, I want to click on apply to all. So that will apply the transition to all of my clips. And this is really important because you don't want to use a variety of transitions in your videos because it's going to make your video look tacky. You want to use the same transition. And again, you want to apply your brand colors to the transition and customize it so that everything looks consistent and branded, which will make your video look professional. The next thing we're going to add are graphical elements. Now, graphical elements are going to just up the value, the production value of your video. And a few graphical elements that I recommend adding are as follows. The first one I like to add is your name and you can say your name as well as add it in text format. So in inside in video, you can use the add text feature to add an animated lower third with your name in it. And that's a great way to make your video immediately look high quality. The next graphical element I highly recommend adding is the subscribe and bell animation. Now this is typically added in after the hook of your video. So you've already given people a reason to watch your video. And then that is the point where you can ask people to subscribe if they're finding value in this video. And you can do this by using the sticker functionality inside in video, and then you can trim the time of these to match when you're actually asking people to subscribe and click the bell. Another feature that in video has a graphical element is to add in your logo. So you can actually upload your business's logo to in video and it will automatically add it to all the scenes inside your video. And so this is a great way to have all of your videos branded and looking consistent. The next thing you want to add inside your video is B-roll. Now B-roll is separate from A-roll. A-roll is you talking on camera. That's your main filming style, right? B-roll is inserts or additional elements that you can add to increase the retention of your videos. And you know that retention is one of the biggest metrics that YouTube uses to see whether people are enjoying your content or not. Now, I don't recommend adding a ton of B-roll that's going to be visually distracting or adding B-roll that doesn't actually match the context of your video. But I do recommend adding strategic B-roll that enhances the value of whatever it is that you are saying. So for example, if I were to say that let's perform a Google search on this, I could add B-roll showing that I'm performing a Google search. So a visual depiction of what I'm actually saying. So you can add B-roll as images and you can add it as videos using in videos stock templates. They have so much stock, millions and millions of stock uh, photos and videos that you can use as B-roll inside your videos. And again, adding B-roll makes your video easier to watch and it adds great production quality provided you use it judiciously. The next scene we're going to add is our end screen template. Now, again, in video has a lot of different end screen templates. You want to go to templates, type in end screen and choose a template that matches the vibe of your content. So I'm going to pick this template. And again, you want to click on add scene to add that particular scene, not the entire template to your timeline. Once you have done that, you can customize the template. And one of my favorite things to do is to let your video play in the end screen template. So you don't want people to get bored at the end and think, oh, now she's just going to be ending the video and summarizing points or stuff like that. You want to keep saying your main content as the video is ending. So the way to do that is to add in your call to action while the video is still playing. To do that, I'm going to take my call to action trip uh, clip, sorry, and drop it into the end screen as a picture in picture. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and resize my talking head video within the end screen. And since I'm pointing to the left, I'm choosing a template that actually allows me to point to the left so that I can share what they should watch next after that video. InVideo has a great feature where you can share your video as a collaboration. So they've just recently launched a collaboration tool where you can share the video that you've created with your team, with your editor, and that is a great way to not have the other person have to download the entire video or render the entire video or make it a huge file, but you can use the collaboration feature to show it, make sure everything is perfect, and then you wanna render out your video. Now, when you're rendering out your video and downloading it, you will need to purchase one of their plans. So I recommend choosing a plan that you can afford, but I also have a discount code for you in the description. So whichever plan you choose, you can get 25% off using my discount code. When you choose the paid plan, you'll be able to download your video without watermarks and you will be able to use the premium stock elements that you chose in the B-roll and other elements that you did inside the edit. The number one reason that I would recommend using InVideo to edit your videos as a beginner is because it is browser based, everything is online, and you don't actually have to download any heavy software onto your computer. Now you can choose the monthly plan if you think that you may have batch recorded a lot of videos and you can edit them all in that particular month. Um, but you can also choose the annual plan if you feel that your editing is going to be on an ongoing basis and the annual plan will actually give you some savings on a month to month basis. Go and watch this video next and get the discount code for InVideo. Start your free trial today and I will see you in the next one.